Good evening, I'm Lindsay Keith and welcome to Center Point on this Monday evening. We begin with the landmark agreement to raise the debt ceiling, which may have staved off dire consequences for the economy. President Biden signed the deal into law on Saturday, calling it a win for the spirit of compromise. All eyes are now on what this means for your money. With inflation still high and people struggling to pay more with less, will this make any difference for Americans' pocketbooks? We're joined now by David Nelson, chief strategist of Bell Point Asset Management and host of the Money Runner podcast. David, welcome to the show. So glad to have you. Help us cut through the noise here a little bit. What does this mean for Americans and their pocketbooks? You know, as Americans, nobody likes to, 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 to know how the sausage is made in Washington. And this has been going on for, you know, you know, since 1917, since World War I, we've had a debt ceiling. And every so often, Congress has to get together with the president and raise that debt ceiling. I think it's been done 78 times. It seems in the last number of years, it's become so politicized that it's become kind of scary. And we've always taken it right up to the drop dead date. And... Uh, the political rhetoric is pretty harsh, but in the end, they get this job done. This one was certainly nothing like 2011. The markets went down about 18 percent in anticipation of that. So I actually thought this one actually went through pretty smooth. So it's expected to save over a trillion dollars for the next 10 years. Is that enough? It isn't. Uh, but and I'm not even sure we're going to we're going to really save save that because there's a lot of things in the language that can can un unwind some of that. But we have to do something. We're running a pretty large deficit. Our, our debt to GDP, gross domestic product, it's the highest since since World War Two. And if we continue on that path, it's going to it's going to get tough. Uh, you know, it's going to get tough for us to remain the, the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency of the world. That gives us a tremendous advantage. It's a tremendous advantage for your pocketbook. So I would like to see, I don't think we really have a, a, uh, a revenue problem right now. I think we have a spending problem. And that's not a, a Democrat or a Republican criticism. It really exists on both sides of the aisle. We have to reduce our spending uh, because the revenue we're generating is certainly going up on a year by year basis. So we know how D.C. is talking about this. Quite a mixed message coming out of there. But how is Wall Street talking about this deal? Are they happy now that we have a crisis averted, essentially? It would have been pretty serious if we had crossed that line and, and done something catastrophic. Uh, it would have been a pretty big hit to the market. Like I said, in 2011, it was almost a 20 percent hit in just a matter of days. So we're beyond the other side of that. And now the markets are starting to focus on other things that Americans are focused on right at, at home right now. The inflation picture, what is the Fed going to do about it? Because each time the Fed raises rates to arrest this problem, it hits the pocketbooks of everyday Americans. We saw what it did to the banks uh, and what it did to the regional bank structure. That's very important to America. You know, it's not J.P. Morgan that funds the credit for say the local strip mall in your local community, that's likely some small regional bank or local bank that is providing that funding. If one of those banks fail, it makes it that much difficult in, in middle America. So do you feel like consumer confidence should be up or down right now? <laughs> it's probably a mixture of both. The very tough question to answer, Lindsay, because we have some, some, some growth engines in the economy right now that are pretty exciting that are going to increase productivity. We've, we were excited about what's going on with artificial intelligence. All of us are going to have to use the technology in some way or form. If you don't learn how to le use something what is now called large language models, it's going to be lot, like not learning how to use Outlook or PowerPoint or, or Microsoft Word uh, 20 years ago. These are important tools that we're all going to have to learn how to use, and it's going to make our lives better. You know, you look at it, the Fed is trying to bring inflation down, but it seems like the economy keeps defying odds. On Friday, the jobs report came out showing 14 months of consecutive job growth, which is quite remarkable if you look at it. But you also have the Fed that's trying to cool inflation. So what does this actually mean for the market at the end of the day? Is the Fed doing a good enough job? Well, they were certainly late. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, I find what the Fed is doing, they're kind of operating from a rule book that was written 50 years ago. So a lot of the data that the Fed looks at is actually backward looking. And uh, my, my criticism is that they're not using modern techniques, even real time analytics like that, like a credit card company would use. I find the data kind of conflicting. Uh, even that you just mentioned the jobs report, the 
the establishment survey, the non-farm payrolls, that was red hot, plus 339,000 jobs. Yet the household survey, unemployment, that actually ticked higher, showing that the Fed, the Fed's hiking of rates is actually starting to cool the economy. We're also seeing just the anecdotal evidence, you know, technology companies laying off tens of thousands of workers, the Amazons, Microsoft, even Apple has cut back in, in, in certain areas. Eventually, I think that trickles down into the economy. Maybe it's not happening fast enough, but it will happen. All right. We'll have to check back in with you in about a month, get another report, but appreciate your insight on this mixed messaging we're getting. Good to see you, David. Thanks for having me.